Today I'll be reviewing your typical family car. Say hello to the new Land Rover Discovery. Depending on the definition, this is third or fifth generation of Land Rover Discovery. I suppose Discovery Series 1 and 2 could be considered two separate generations because of how long they were in production. Discovery 3 and 4, or LR3 and LR4 as they are known stateside, were pretty much a pre-facelift and post-facelift cars. If we were to assume external design has to differ significantly for it to be the next generation, then 2017 Land Rover Discovery is the third generation, and if you're a Land Rover fan, I'm sure you'll tell me why I'm wrong. Land Rover Discovery, let's call it third generation, has a whiff of Range Rover about it. With 292cm wheelbase and almost 5 meters overall length, Land Rover Discovery is the size of Range Rover Vogue. Anyway, Discovery is made on the same Range Rover platform. Originally, Discovery was supposed to be the cheaper Range Rover. And it is a couple of grand cheaper than comparable Range Rover Sport, and a good 25,000 cheaper than the Vogue. But the Disco is by no means cheap. Prices start at a reasonable 50,000 euro, which doesn't sound as bad as around 90,000 this test example costs. And this is not a range topping model either. A symmetrical tailgate is a reference to the previous discoveries. In series 1 and 2, the asymmetry was a result of a door mounted spare tire. In 3 and 4, an external spare was an aftermarket option. 3 and 4 also had a split tailgate, which was useful to change your muddy wellies or admire your vast property. Here we have a fold-out bench which unfolds automatically, or not, I haven't figured out what makes it work, but there is a bunch of buttons to operate the bench, the seats in the third row and the second row, a trailer hitch, by the way, depending on engine version and tire model, the Discovery can tow up to 3.5 tons. Here I wanted to say something about how over-engineered this whole seat folding business is, but then I remembered seat folding in Discovery 4 and, to be honest, I'm lucky to have all my 10 fingers still intact. From this perspective, automation is good, even if with the third row of seats up, there isn't much space left for even tiny shopping. But at least they didn't forget about space for the boot cover, like they did in the Discovery Sport. Boot volume for a seven-seater with the third row of seats up is 258 liters, and with the third row folded, it's 1137 liters. As usual, Land Rover calculates boot volume from floor to roof. According to my calculations, floor to window line results would be closer to 120 behind the third row and 600 liters behind the second row. Entering the third row is relatively easy and partly automated. There's enough space in the back for two adults and their isofix points. Of course, there's plenty of space in the second row, the floor is flat and there's an armrest with cup holders, climate control, USB ports, place for bottles in the door bins, and double pockets in the backrests of front seats. Predictably, also the front section of the cabin is spacious, the glove box is huge, there's an optional fridge under the armrest, there's also storage hidden behind the center console, which is where optional CD player resides, and under the cup holders. There are also large infotainment system with optional TV tuner. There are plenty of USB ports, and this is how it should be done. By the way, SatNav is far from class leading, and address input takes ages, so I often use the lower storage as a place to put my smartphone with Google Maps on it. Typical for Land Rovers and Range Rovers, and obsolete, or additional armrests with knobs to adjust the height. It's a bit of Land Rover history. You can have your Land Rover Discovery with a 2 or a 3 liter diesel power ranging from 180 to 258 horsepower. There is also a 3 liter petrol motor that's 340 horsepower that's the weakest least powerful engine offered in the big Range Rover range this here is a 258 horsepower diesel 
The 3 liter diesel V6 uses around 9 liters per 100 kilometers combined, Land Rover claims 7 and a bit. With an 85 liter tank and a light right foot, you may be able to cover 1000 kilometers between refueling. 8.1 seconds from 0 to 100 km per hour is enough to leave most other road users behind, but for an SUV there is a lot of sport missing from the Discovery. Suspension is soft, center of gravity is rather high, but if you need to overtake, it takes just 6 seconds to go from 80 to 120 km per hour. And here we go. By the way, the engine is so smooth that for the first couple of days I thought I was driving the V6 petrol. It doesn't sound like a diesel at all. Land Rover Discovery wafts and you forget about everyday travel. It glides over speed bumps, but on uneven surfaces it does sway sideways a fair bit. Good thing there are those extra seat pockets in the back for sickness bags. Besides the slow and unresponsive satnav, the rest of the infotainment system is relatively intuitive. I easily found controls for rear AC, for rear seats, heating and cooling. Yeah, it has that as well. You can also order climate control for the third row of seats if you need that. The most important thing here is not the folding seats, because yes, I can fold them and unfold them from here but the fact that uh, I can fold the headrests. That's very important because the three headrests in the second row and the two headrests in the third row, they obstruct rear visibility. So it's a good thing there's just one button for all that. But I can't find my perfect driving position. The headrest, regardless of whether it's in its lowest or higher setting, see, electric, uh, regardless of its setting, it's just a couple of degrees tilted too much to the front, so I'm not perfectly comfortable. It's, it's a minor thing, and I suppose if I wasn't going back and forth between different cars, I wouldn't have noticed, or I would have got used to it after some time, but since I am going back and forth between different cars, it is a nuisance. I can distinctly feel this is slanted too much to the front. And one more thing, manual adjustment of the steering column in a 90 grand car, seriously? I'd love to tell you something about this car's off-road abilities, but I decided against looking for more challenging terrain, as finding a tractor to pull me out can be a challenge, an expensive one too. With optional pneumatic suspension, Land Rover Discovery can wade up to 90 cm deep, approach angle is 34 degrees, breakover angle is 27.5 degrees and departure angle is 30 degrees. Unfortunately, just before the Polish launch event, there was some flooding on the planned routes and organizers decided it's safer to cancel the off-road tests. Apparently, the car could have made it through, not necessarily on stock tires and not necessarily with all bumpers intact. But then I don't expect an average Discovery owner to encounter anything rougher than a wet field or a boat ramp. However, a Discovery owner is likely to lead an active lifestyle, which means that he or she may choose this NFC bracelet instead of risking losing the key while chasing mountain goats or something. So what this does is it supposedly locks there we go, and hopefully also unlocks the car while the key is still inside. And uh, yes, it sounds great, but I would check with your insurance company how they react if the car got stolen and the key was inside. And now let me try unlock this thing. I think you need to press a button here. It's that or I'm not leaving. Come on. Off. Oh. Oh. It's nerve-wracking this, it really is. <laughs> Land Rover Discovery is big. It's a seven-seater, 
It's expensive and it looks like a Range Rover. Super flows? Not necessarily. I know people who wouldn't have anything less for their family. And what do you think about the new Land Rover Discovery? Let me know in the comment section below. Subscribe if you haven't done so yet. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And if you like what I do, please contribute to my Patreon or PayPal. Links in the description below. New episodes every Friday. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.